Shalom Israel, most high in Christ bless. Most high in Christ bless. We pray you all are well. Shalom, shalom. South Africa, all praises. All praises. <clears throat> We're going to get started in about one more minute. Let's uh let's rise and face Jerusalem. Uh, sisters, cover your heads. Brothers, uncover your heads. We're gonna send our prayers to our Lord. Rise and face Jerusalem. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mighty God of heaven and earth, we humbly come before thee, Father, asking for your mercy and forgiveness of our sins, 
the sins of our forefathers, dear Lord, for we borne their iniquities, dear Lord. And we, have, we are plagued this day, Father God, for all our transgressions, dear Lord. We pray that you heal us up, strengthen us spiritually, physically, Father God, mentally, Father God, that we may serve thee with perfection, dear Lord, that we may be profitable servants unto thee. Father God, we pray that you remove all the lust of the flesh that's in us, Father God, the lust of the eyes, dear Lord, the, the, the goings of the world, Father God. We pray that you remove it from us, dear Lord, that we may serve thee, Father God. Empty out this vessel of flesh, dear Lord, and pour your spirit upon us, dear Lord. We pray for the sick among us in the body, Father God. We pray that you send a healing upon the nation of Israel, dear Lord, for we are nothing but uh, grass of the field, Father God, that withereth away. Father, we pray that you strengthen us as pillars, dear Lord. Strengthen us, dear Lord, to be uh, uh, servants unto thee in all things, Father God, in our words, our thoughts, and our deeds. Father, protect us from the hands of our enemies, dear Lord. Protect us in these times, Father God, as we're in captivity, dear Lord. Have mercy upon us, dear Lord, while we're in this captivity and in the day of your son's return. Have mercy on Israel. In your son Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise. Oh, man. Okay. Um, is there a ranked brother online that can scribe? A ranked brother that can scribe. Is there a ranked brother online that can scribe? Shalom, shalom, everybody. Most high in Christ, bless. See, I went. We're not going to use the laptop today because every time we use the laptop, we got issues, so we just going to go straight with the iPhone, you know. You know. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no Android, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's an iPhone, so you know. Yeah, team iPhone. <laughs> team iPhone, bro. <laughs> um, just waiting to see if there's anyone. Is there a willing brother online that can scribe? Shalom, shalom, everybody. Most high in Christ, bless. Need one of you mighty men to step up. <clears throat> okay. We don't have any scribes. All right, so we'll just continue. Lord's will, um, a brother can jump on and and scribe all right um as you can see by the title of today's class uh, prayer for vengeance or pray for vengeance um we you know and it's funny because i in the prayer i don't think i prayed for vengeance <laughs> oh. oh i just cut myself holy crap but Lord's will, we'll get it right. Myself included. Myself included. Um, all praise. Hey, shalom, Adam. Most high Christ bless. Uh, that, I threw myself off now. Dag on. Um, you know what? Let's just get started with class. It'll come back to me. My mind ain't what it used to be. It'll come back to me. You know what I want to do, though? Let's we, let's go to Sirach 36 real quick, and we're going to read through it quickly. Because the mindset of us as a people is we often view when, you know, we bring out destruction of the enemies, things of that nature, or prayer for vengeance. We say, I don't really like that part of the Bible. I'm not really comfortable with, you know, um, the nations being destroy things of that nature but here's the thing actually first give me isaiah 34 16 isaiah 34 verse 16 no matter if we are comfortable with it eased by it come you know whatever whatever the case may be Let's see what the Bible says. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. Come on. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So all our understanding is going to come out of the book of the Lord. Okay. A lot of us are waiting for the 
way that the Lord dealt with our forefathers to deal with us in that same way today, meaning the Lord is going to speak to us directly. The Lord gave us all the understanding we need right here. And we can't even handle this much. We can't handle this much. Um, continue to read. No one of these shall fail. It says, no, no one of these shall fail. There are many prophecies in the Bible and destruction of the nations is one of them. God says that prophecy will not fail. It will not fail. Not one bit. Read from the top again. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Uh -huh. No one of these shall fail. Not one of these prophecies shall fail. Um... All right, so Sirach 36. Ecclesiastes chapter 36 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Have mercy upon us, O Lord God of all. Mm -hmm. So and one, one thing we always pray for is mercy. And everyone is very comfortable with that, right? Go ahead. And behold us and send thy fear upon all the nations mm -hmm. that seek not after thee. Mm -hmm. Lift up thy because hand. What, what you might not know is every being creature on the planet is supposed to praise the Lord. Everyone. As it will be in that day. Remember it says that in Zechariah, for, for, for any nation that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, the Lord shall not send rain upon them, meaning the Lord is going to send judgment upon them. The whole earth is supposed to reverence the Lord. The entire earth. Go ahead. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations mm -hmm. and let them see thy power. Mm -hmm. As thou was sanctified in us before them, mm -hmm. so be thou magnified among them before us. So now, so now there's going to be a, 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 what do you call that? A, a turning of, a turning upside down, right? Go ahead. Verse five, mm -hmm. and let them know thee as we have known thee. Because we've known the Lord in blessing and curses. We've known the Lord in blessings and destruction, right? Go ahead. That there is no God, but only thou, O God. Mm -hmm. Show new signs and make other strange wonders. Mm -hmm. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Mm -hmm. Raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Hold on. Hold on. Destroy the enemy. That sounds harsh. That that doesn't that doesn't give that warm fuzzy feeling that many of us like when it comes to the scriptures or many of us are used to. Destroy the enemy. Now, some of you have a warmonger spirit. I know you're used to the word whoremonger, but I said warmonger. Because a lot of us want to uh, bring forth that destruction or that vengeance now ourselves. Let's go to Romans 12. We're going to come back here later. Romans 12, verse 19. And I, because I want to make this very clear. Okay. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Dearly beloved. Avenge not yourselves, mm -hmm. but rather give place unto wrath. Hmm. For it is written, vengeance is mine. Hmm. I will repay, saith the Lord. Now, the Lord said this. The Lord said he will repay. So, you know us, we work on CP time. If the Lord even told us to uh, bring forth vengeance, many of some of us will show up late. We show up in our, in our, in our pajama pants. And, and big slippers. We wouldn't even have on our war apparel, okay? We have on the, the robe, hair looking crazy, forget our sword in the car. It, it, <laughs> in our destroyed state, most times, like, I can't use you to bring judgment on the nations now. That's not going to happen because we still operate on CP time. We still, we still uh, messed up ourselves. Hey, we'll call out sick. <laughs> Most I say, hey, bring judgment on the nations. Be like, hey, uh, uh, patch me in the most high because uh, I can't make it. I, I ain't feeling like myself today. You know, I ate too much uh, hog maws last night. That's how we do. So most high is like, listen, mm -mm. vengeance will be his. And we're going to get to that. 
Because I know some of you might have said, I thought the Lord was going to use us. We'll get to all of that. Lord's will. Lord's will time permits. Look, give me Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9. I'm going to try to get, because I have a lot of scriptures here, and I'm hoping to get through them all because I want to convey the point. Lord's will. Lord's will. Zechariah 9, and start at... 10. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 10. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim mm -hmm. and the horse from Jerusalem mm -hmm. and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace unto the heathen. Hold on. But this is the time of the Babylonians. If you look at the wording, he shall speak peace unto the heathen. This is a prophecy going on. We just read the fulfillment of the prophecy in Romans chapter 9, where it says, vengeance is of the Lord. We are not to avenge ourselves. That's what we're reading right here in Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah, during the time, because in the time of Babylon, and I went over this before in class, in the time of Babylon, we did rebel against the Chaldeans and try to fight against them. We were killed. The same thing we did with the Greeks, the same thing we did. We've always done that. But the Lord said, there's going to be a time where the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace unto the heathen. Meaning it's not going to be sword for sword anymore. There's going to be a time where that vengeful spirit that we once had and the ability to avenge ourselves will be cut off. That's what I want y'all to understand. How are you going to be in a spirit where you're going to be uh, vengeful and avenge yourself when you have to depend on your enemy for the want of all things. What, what, do, you, what do you own? A couple of uh, rocks in the, in the dirt patch in the abandoned buildings uh, 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 area that you can throw against the military? Are you kidding me? The Lord said there's going to be a time when that battle bow is going to be cut off. Where you won't be able to lift up sword like King David did. Lift up sword like our forefathers did to fight against your enemy. That time was going to come to an end. That's why vengeance is the lord's that's why we have to pray for it hope y'all understand that keep reading and he shall speak peace unto the heathen mm -hmm. and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea mm -hmm. and from the river even to the ends of the earth mm -hmm. as for thee also by the blood of thy covenant i have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water mm -hmm. turn you to the stronghold Ye prisoners of hope, even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee mm. when I have bent Judah for I'm me. sorry, uh, read, read that part again. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope, mm -hmm. even day today mm -hmm. to, do I declare that I will render double unto thee mm -hmm. when I have bent Judah for me. Fill thy bow with Ephraim Good. and raise up and raise up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. Hold on. Hold on. So there's going to be a time where Judah and Ephraim, or southern kingdom and northern kingdom, is going to be the weapons of the Lord. Keep reading. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall be seen over them. And his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. Mm. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. So the Lord is also going to be in the midst of those mighty men that he turns into his weapons. He will be in the midst of them as a mighty whirlwind. Why are we going here? Jump to, um, real quick, go to Psalms 35. I'm going to jump back a little bit. Psalms 35 and verse, start at verse 1. Psalm chapter 35 and verse mm -hmm. 1. Mm -hmm. Plead my cause, O Lord, mm -hmm. with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. So now, here's the thing. But here we went, I went back because David is in a time where he could avenge himself. But who did, the, who did David put his trust in even during that time? 
David put his trust in the Lord, asking the Lord to avenge him. Hmm. Go ahead. Verse 2. Take hold of thy of shield and buckler, and stand up for mine help. Mm -hmm. Draw out also the spear, and stop the way against them that persecute me. Mm -hmm. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded, and put to shame that seek after my soul. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that divides my hurt. Mm -hmm. Let them be as chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery mm -hmm. and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. And said, so let the angel of the Lord persecute them. Persecute all that all and disappoint all of the ways that they have against the children of Israel. Rona, go ahead. Verse seven. <laughs> Verse seven. For without cause. Have they hid for me mm -hmm. their net in a pit, mm -hmm. which were without cause they have. Oh, with, I'm sorry. Verse seven. Mm -hmm. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit, mm -hmm. which without cause they have digged for my soul. Mm. Let destruction come upon him that unawares. Hold on. Hold on. We have King David here. Writing something very specific, as we just read in Sirach chapter 36, right? And real, I'm sorry, I don't lose my thought. Real quick, David just prayed in verse 8, let destruction come upon him at unawares, when he least expected. Meaning in the time of their pride, when they're lifted up and they feel that no one can take them down, let the Lord's destruction come upon them at that time when they least expect it. This is King David. And oftentimes in these different religions, they don't talk about these scriptures in regards to how the Lord feels about or how our forefathers feel about the other nations that plot against them. Because that would give them an understanding of how we should regard the nations today. Now, we just, and that's the reason I went to Romans 9 and Zechariah, excuse me, Romans 12 and Zechariah chapter 9, because a lot of times we don't want the spirit to fall on brothers thinking we're condoning any kind of violence or um, payback, I should say, in these times. No, our job is to pray to the Lord as we're reading for King David is praying to the Lord, asking the Lord to handle his business. Keep reading. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. Let destruction come upon him at unawares, mm -hmm. and let his net that he has hid him catch himself. Mm. Into, the, into that very destruction, let him fall. It says, into that very destruction. So I, I want y'all to see what David just said. David asked for the net that he has mm -hmm. set for us, for them to fall into it, unto their very destruction. So that means the net that they actually set for us was to destroy us. Because if you flip the turn and flip the flip the coin and let them fall into that net, you're saying let them be destroyed. So what was the net they set for us? It was for destruction. That's your planned parenthoods. That's your um what do you call it? section 8 where the, the man can't be in the house anymore. It's to destroy the family. That's the defile food. It's to destroy us as a people. That's the uh, uh, the Willie Lynch, the putting the light against the dark, the old against the young, the woman against the man. It's a destructive process. King David's prayer is let them fall into that. Huh. Continue to read. Verse 9. And my soul shall be joyful. Whoa. How are you going to be happy at the destruction of another nation? Because they're happy at our destruction. The, the net that they're setting. Give, uh, give me that. What's that? Lamentations. They they clap their hands. I think it's Lamentations 3. I got to go there real quick. Lamentation, Lamentations. It's in chapter 1 and chapter 3. Hold on one second, y'all. Oh, chapter 2. It's 
chapter 2? Yeah, verse 15. Or verse 14. Oh, 15. Uh, yep. Lamentations, chapter 2 and verse... Um, yeah, 15. Verse 15. <coughs> All that pass by clap their hands at thee. Mm -hmm. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. saying... Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? Mm -hmm. Jump to chapter 1, verse 21. Lamentation, chapter 1, and verse 21. Mm -hmm. They have heard that I sigh. Mm -hmm. There is none to comfort me. Mm -hmm. All mine enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad. They're what? They are glad. They are glad at the net that we fall in. The destruction that they attempt, the fact that we as a people lead in uh, 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 the amount of abortions, the, they are glad that their, that their secret plot, the net that they set, has worked. That's, what, that's, what, that's, that's how they feel. They are glad. They're clapping their hands. Job well done, Harvey. Job well done, uh, 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 I don't know. You know, I'll make up some names in a minute. <laughs> I don't know what their names are. Uh, let's go back. Psalms 35 and verse 9. So as the table turns, as David is praying that they fall into the net that they've set for us, let destruction be upon them. Verse 9. <clears throat> Psalm chapter 35, verse 9. Come on. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. So we're going to rejoice the same way that they are glad at our destruction. We are going to be glad at their destruction. Now, this is, listen, again, it's not about how you may feel or what you may think. It's about what God says. What we think has gotten us in more trouble than we can even count. It ain't about what you think. It's about what God says. Go ahead. It shall rejoice in his salvation. Mm -hmm. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, mm -hmm. which deliverest the poor from him that is too strong for mm -hmm. him? Mm -hmm. Yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. Mm -hmm. spoileth him. Mm -hmm. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Wait a minute. David said they, they accused him of things he didn't even know about. Like we started the coronavirus. They kicking, aren't they kicking uh, uh, Jake out of China? They won't let them go into the restaurants and, and the supermarkets and taking their passports. They're laying things to our charge we had nothing to do with. They said we started AIDS. Meanwhile, this is all governmental lab stuff that they're making up. And yet we... <laughs> Get the blame. It tells you that in Sirach, it says there's uh, my soul loatheth the, the uprising of a city. There's three things my soul hateth mm -hmm. or loatheth. The uprising of a city and then something else that says and the act, the false accusation. It talks about the scriptures tell you that's something that you you dread to be blamed for something you didn't do. David said this is one of the things that they do. Go ahead. Verse 12, mm -hmm. they rewarded me evil for good mm -hmm. to the spoiling of my soul. Dang, um, mm, go ahead. Go but ahead. as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's just like on the plantation. Or even today, we're, we're the caregivers in that community, right? When... Uh, the person we're caring for or we, we're attendants for or even on the plantation, master got sick. We felt a certain way. We wanted master to prosper. David said when his enemies fell sick, he started to fast for them. Go ahead. I humbled my soul with fasting and my prayer returned into my own bosom. Mm -hmm. I have behaved myself as though he had been my friend wait, or wait, brother. Wait, 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 wait. Because this, this, is some, yeah, this is some heavy stuff here. David is ruling right now. He's in a point where he can uh, uh, command tribute. It tells you that in Sirach that this was a peaceable time. 
So during a time where there's peace because the, is, the righteous Israelite man is ruling, the nations are plotting against him. The nations want evil for him, but David is actually sending up prayers for the Lord to have mercy on them. But when, go ahead, keep reading. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother, but in, go ahead. But in my adversity, in his adversity, they when, rejoiced. He was, when he was going through things, because the Lord judged David as well, they rejoiced. So, Massa, we, you, we sick. I'm going to make you some tea. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make sure you get better because we need you, Massa. But when we fall sick, you get whipped and called lazy. You're lying. You just don't want to do any work. You don't want to pick no cotton. You get hung up in the, in the field in the hot sun. You get thrown in the hot box. We can't even get sick. And if we get sick, we started Corona. What the hell? This, listen. <sighs> Go ahead. I have bowed, verse 15, but in mine adversity, mm -hmm. they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me. It means, now abjects means the lowest form of misery, the lowest form of rejects. You know, matter of fact, look that up. Look up definition of, of, of abjects. I want to get the official definition. If I, remember, if I remember correctly, it means like like miserable, like a miserable people or a miserable position or a miserable uh, mindset. Something with misery, I remember. Abjects. Uh, this abject, it says, of a person or be or their behavior completely without pride or dignity so there's no pride no dignity go ahead self-abasing so self-abased meaning they're the lowest form give me some more uh that's the only one scroll scroll down there's you know the I million webs oh okay okay no nah, it tells you you ain't gotta go into it it tell go ahead read you see how it'll tell you like right there um Cast off, rejected, um, servile, slavish. Base-spirited. You, you see that thing? So what is David saying? He said the abjects or the, the, the ones who should be slaves, the, the lowest of the low, the basis of people. This is, this is some heavy stuff here. David is calling these nations absolutely nothing. I want y'all to see that. Because when we when we when we bring it out to brothers and sisters on the street, uh, 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 in um in Second Ezra chapter six, that they're nothing, <gasps> they don't believe. But God says it so many times in different ways throughout the scriptures. Read that again. Psalm chapter thirty five and verse fifteen. Mm -hmm. But in mine adversity they rejoice mm -hmm. and gather themselves together. Yea, the abjects gather themselves together against me. Hold on. Hold on. Can you read some of those definitions again? I want y'all to understand this. So just like it tells you in the scriptures about, um, I have seen um, uh, servants on horses. What's that, Amos? It's Hosea. Hosea. I've seen servants on horses and princes walk upon the... What? This is why, uh, yes, they're, they're dogs. That's what God says. Read the defi read a few definitions again. I, that thing is making me feel good that David called him this too. Go ahead. Abjects, utterly hopeless, miserable, humiliating. Wait, hold on. Now it kind of makes sense why they hate you so much. Because all the promises are for the 12 tribes of Israel. Any promise of hope, any promise of being above uh, this base nation, this base kingdom, only go to the 12 tribes of Israel. Right, right. The lowest, yeah, the lowest of the low have the nerve to speak against the sons and daughters of the living God. That's, that's something crazy to me. Go ahead, read that again. Utterly hopeless, miserable, humiliating. Miserable, that's okay. That's the one I remember. Miserable, go ahead. Or wretched. Mm-hmm. Contemptible, 
despicable, base spirited. Base spirited. Because in Psalms uh, 52, the spirit in them is not. How's it go? Oh, I got it. Not upright, it's in Becky. It's in Psalms 52. Oh. Psalms 53. Where is it again? Psalms 58, I think. Hold on. Yes, Psalms 58, verse 3. It says, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. But you, Habakkuk is the one that said, The spirit is not upright. Enough. Yeah, yeah, you were right. I, I, I treated you like a. <laughs> my bad, bro. My bad. You the precept king. Uh, read that again. The definitions? Definitions, yeah, definitions. I like that thing. It said, Cast off, uh, rejected. So, hold on. When you hear a word like rejected, when you get to Hebrews chapter 12 and it tells you that Esau is rejected, it goes in Genesis, tell you that Esau is rejected. David is reiterating the same thing. There is no promise of the kingdom for these nations. I, I hope y'all understand that. I, hold on. You got more? There's okay. One more to say spiritless. Oh, so give me that in Habakkuk then. I'm sorry. D listen, this we could have a whole class just on that word. Right. Abjects. I'm trying to tell y'all. I don't know. I don't know. You got these uh some camps that be trying to save these nations. Mm-mm. Not not with we we can't be reading the same Bible. No way. Go ahead. Habakkuk chapter two, verse four. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. They lift up in pride. They have the, they have the nerve to be prideful. But God says you are abased. You are abjects. Wow. I'm sorry. That made me feel good. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. To know that the Lord has said we are created above all people and the nations are absolutely nothing. Go back. Go back to the verse again. I'm sorry. We spent a lot of time on that one. Mm. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me. The spiritless, the basis, the, 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 what was some more? Servile. The servile, the slavist. Was that a word? It said slavist. It said slave is the most slave of the slave has risen up themselves against King David. <sighs> well, they, King David pay, uh, prayed for them because they were tributaries to him. What happens is if you have an agreement with leaders, just like we had uh, Joseph had an agreement with Pharaoh when we entered into Egypt when a new king rose up, what happened? <laughs> they put us through hard bondage. So same thing. David had agreements with those leaders. Everything was good. It was a peaceable time. The moment somebody else comes into play, you don't know what their agenda is. All right. So that's why David wanted to keep them alive so that they can continue to be tributaries to Israel. They were paying all their goods. They were giving it up because they had no choice. King David was like, yo, listen. Either you pay or I'm coming for you. So same thing with King Solomon. They paid tribute. They paid, they were tributaries to him. Moab, Esau, they were all tributaries to David. But when a new king rises up, you never know what you're going to get. All right. So he wanted to keep it where it was running smoothly. All right. I hope y'all understand that. Go ahead. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me and I knew it not. They did tear me and ceased not mm -hmm. with hypocritical mockers and feasts. Go ahead. They gnashed upon me with their teeth. Mm -hmm. Lord, how long wilt thou lock on? Lock on. Mm -hmm. Rescue my soul from their destructions. What verse you in? Verse 17. Go ahead. Rescue my soul's soul from their destructions. My darling from the lions. I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. Mm -hmm. I will praise thee among much people. Mm -hmm. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Mm -hmm. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. Mm -hmm. For they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. You see that thing? 
So David is uh, pleading his cause to the Lord. OK, they devise evil secretly. They secretly shoot arrows at him, things of that nature. And David is petitioning to the Lord to destroy the adversary. All of those who have evil plots against him, destroy them. That felt good. I like that thing. But real quick. Uh, Nahum one and two. The book of Nahum, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 2. Nahum, chapter 1, and verse 2. Mm -hmm. God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth, and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Hold on. What what just happened? Read, read that again, bro. Nahum chapter 1 verse 2. God is jealous and the Lord revenges. The Lord revenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries mm -hmm. and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. It says he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is storing up a judgment for the nations. He's storing it up. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a building process. Huh. What time you got? 45. Okay. He's storing up a special judgment for his enemies. Real quick. Go to Psalms 83. Verse two. Some of somebody may be online, not knowing that the Lord has enemies. Yes, the Bible says the Lord has enemies. Go ahead. Psalm chapter 83 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. So the Lord's enemies make a, a loud uprising or a loud uproar. Almost like a riot, right? Go ahead. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So they have lifted up in pride. They that hate Most High have lifted up in pride. This is the same thing David was just talking about in Psalms 35. It says the abjects of all people to rise up against me, the basis of the base are secretly plotting against me. Go ahead. Verse three, mm -hmm. they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Didn't David just talk about that? That is done in secret. That's the crafty counsel It's all throughout the scriptures. Guess what? The Lord said there's a special type of vengeance for these things. We just read that in Nahum. Nahum 1 and 2. God is jealous and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Read that again. They Verse. have taken crafty counsel against thy people mm -hmm. and consulted against thy hidden ones. They, he's, they've consulted on how to do all this secret evil to God's people. You got to wonder, why all this evil happened to so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Why is it so, everything so evil that we would do, that we think to do, that we want to do? Why is it so evil in all these nations' eyes? Why is, why is us breathing so bad? Us walking, uh, uh, drinking a coffee in Starbucks, uh, going to wherever. Why is it uh, going to the pool? Why is it so bad with us? God says, because the abjects or the basis of base, the slaviest, the most defiled and I don't even, I can't even think of any more words. People on the planet have plotted against the sons and daughters of the living God the same way they did to King David. Go ahead. Verse four, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. So why would they keep doing those things to us? Because they have a primary objective to cut us off from being a nation. That's their primary objective. And they're going to continue until they feel they're going to be a, they're going to accomplish their goal. But they don't know the God we serve, the God that says none of his prophecies shall fail, not one. So what we're reading about, we're reading about some of the prophecies. We're reading about it. Give me Mike, Micah 5.15. 
Let's see another prophecy. Some of y'all may not like this and may not sit well with you, but it'll be okay. It's okay. Drink some orange juice. Drink, drink some juicy juice. You'll be okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Micah chapter 5 verse 15. Mm -hmm. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen. Good. Such as they have not heard. Sometimes you just got to let things marinate. We'll just let it marinate for a second. God says there's going to be a judgment that like, unlike any you have heard of. Hey, this, this, listen, there's, there's, there's a brother who said, we're the only ones who walk around so proud, prideful. We have to put a menorah on our stuff and we have to say we're the Israelites every second of the day. Listen. It sucks to be the other nations and the other nations have rejoiced in the position that they have stolen from us for so long. Now we're back in that position. We know where we belong. We know this Bible is for us. Oh, you damn right. I'm gonna be glad. Like the scripture says, you dag on right. I'm gonna be happy. You dag on right. I'm gonna rejoice. You dag on right. That's why I changed my name. So everything I signed got Israel on it. That's right. Every dag on thing. To hell with that coon stuff. Read that again, man. Micah chapter 5 verse 15. And I will execute vengeance. Who's going to do it? I will execute vengeance and anger. This is, what, this is what the Lord said. The Lord said he is going to execute vengeance. That's why we can't, we can't, we don't have to stress. We just have to focus on doing what he says. He said to keep his commandments with faith in his son. We have to be vigilant, diligent in doing that. A lot of us be trying to think too far ahead. The Lord says, right now, what I gave you, work on that. Hold on to that. But we have a hard time doing just that. Hmm. Right. Yeah, rejoice. Rejoice. For so long, you thought you was a nigga. For so long, you thought you was a spick. For so long, you thought you were nothing and a base. Why in the hell can I not put double that energy into knowing who I am? Listen, anybody that's trying to tell you to hide who you are or to not be happy about finding out who you are is the damn devil the Bible speaks of. Okay? He's the devil. I'm sorry, one more time. I like that thing. And I will execute vengeance and anger. Matter of fact, you know what? Because that thought just... It's, 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 it's hitting me right now. Give me um, Psalms 58, verse 10. Just, just a quick sidebar. For you devils that don't think rejoicing is biblical. Ah, let's see. Psalm chapter 58, verse 10. Mm -hmm. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Can you read that again? Psalm chapter 58, verse 10. Mm -hmm. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. I'm not, I'm not, now nah, I was a C student my whole life. Maybe a couple D's too. A few F's. <laughs> but I can comprehend what I'm reading. And when the Lord's judgment comes, there's going to be a rejoicing process that happens. Wait a minute. So you're telling me, hold on, give me Baruch 4 and 4, because this is the, that's the end time, right? That's the end time. So let's deal with now. Let's deal with now. So we're going to rejoice and be happy in the end. Let's see about now. Baruch chapter 4, verse 4. O Israel, happy are we. Whoa. I'm sorry. The Israelites can be happy about something? Let's see what they're happy about. For things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. I think we should just shut the camera down and just, just go home. Just, just forget about it. I'm, 
Anyone who tells you you should not be joyful, you should not rejoice in knowing who you are is the damn devil the Bible speaks of. Right. I, I, hey, take it how you want to take it. It is what it is. I'm, I'm, I, listen, when, when, they, when they say, uh, thank you, Mr. Israel, how can I help you, Mr. Israel? Oh, man, I like that thing. I like that thing. I remember one time uh, uh, when I heard them uh, call, that's, that's one of the things I was like, oh, hell no, I need that feeling too. When I heard them call, say that to Bishop, before I changed my name, it, them saying it to him made me get bubbly and warm and tingly inside. I was like, oh, hell no. I, I, we came on a trip. I came, we came back. I put my paper in, papers in that damn next day. Came back on Sunday. Monday, I was at the courthouse. Like, mm-mm, mm-mm. That don't do feel good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be a real Jew. You got to be, yeah, be a real Jew. I don't know. That's a whole nother topic. Um, That thing threw me off, though. <laughs> Baruch 4 4. Yeah, yeah, read Baruch 4 4 one more time. Baruch chapter 4, verse 4. Mm -hmm. O Israel, happy are we, for things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. The things that are pleasing unto God are made known unto us. You now know who you are. You know that none of these prophecies shall fail. Happy are you. The things that are pleasing unto God, God told us to pray for the destruction of our enemies. The things that are pleasing unto us, pleasing unto God are made known unto us. Why would we not rejoice? Why would we not know, rejoice in the fact that our identity was stolen for so long and now we're back? Why would we not rejoice in the fact that we can read for ourselves now? Why would we not rejoice? <sighs> Lord have mercy, help me. Um, give me Jeremiah 16. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will send for many fishes, mm -hmm. saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. Mm -hmm. and, after, and after will I send for many hunters, mm -hmm. and they shall hunt them from every mountain mm -hmm. and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Mm. Some, some major uh, 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 tracking going on here. Go ahead. For mine eyes are upon all their ways. Mm -hmm. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. So it says, neither are the things that they've done in secret for so long hid from the Lord's eyes. Okay? The Lord sees it all. The Lord is going to handle his business. Go ahead. And first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. Hold on. The Lord says he's going to pay them double? The Lord said he's going to pay back these nations Double, double what they did to us, he's going to pay them back. Go ahead. Because they have defiled my land. Mm -hmm. They have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. Mm, go ahead. Oh Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth mm -hmm. and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies. Whoa. <sighs> Read that line again. Surely our fathers have inherited lies, mm -hmm. vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Mm -hmm. Shall a man make gods unto himself and mm -hmm. they are no gods? Mm -hmm. Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know I will cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is the Lord. The Lord said, I'm going to cause them to know that I am the one true God. They have exalted themselves as God for far too long. Most High is not sharing space with anyone. He's not sharing his rulership and duality with anyone. He's going to make sure they know that he is the one true God. The same thing with Pharaoh in Egypt. Pharaoh thought he can just talk reckless all he wanted. And the Most High made sure they acknowledged that he was the one true God. But guess what? 
what the Lord is going to do in these last days is far beyond what we've read about with Pharaoh. Remember, he said he's going to go back to that Michael 5. Go back to that Michael 5 and 15. Micah chapter 5 verse 15. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as have such as they have not heard. They have never heard about this judgment. Because guess what? That's why they're lifted up in pride, because they have not been repaid for the things that they have done yet. So they're prideful. They're like, oh, surely give me that in Psalms 50. Surely the Lord is one of us. That's why they can paint him uh, 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 as a Caucasian. And, oh, the Lord didn't do anything? Oh, he must. So he must be a Caucasian. Psalms 50 and verse 16. Psalm chapter 50 and verse 16. Mm hmm Verse 16, but unto the wicked God said, mm -hmm. what hast thou to do to declare my statutes or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Mm -hmm. The wicked being uh, Esau, go ahead. Seeing thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee. Mm -hmm. When thou sawest a thief, then thou contendest with them. Consented. Consented with him mm -hmm. and has been partaker with adultery. So when... When um, Babylon was raiding us and taking everything from us, so on and so forth, Esau consented with it. When Babylon burned Israel, Esau went in afterwards and burned it some more. Go ahead. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Mm -hmm. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Mm -hmm. So Esau slanders Jacob, which is us. We're Jacob. Go ahead. These things hast thou done. And I kept silence. Mm -hmm. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. So God says, listen, because I have not punished you yet, you seriously believe that God is an Edomite. You seriously believe that you're not worthy of judgment. That's why the Israelite, or I should say IUIC, is public enemy number one. Because we'll bring out the understanding of what the judgment is for these nations. And everybody's in an uproar. Everybody's offended. Everybody is a, 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 on attack mode against us. Well, all we're doing is reading the Bible. To be honest, that's all we're doing is reading the Bible. We haven't, uh, we haven't attacked anyone. We haven't uh, you know, uh, kicked in any doors and tried to repay anyone. We haven't done any of that. All we do have done is read a book. This goes to show you that this book is spiritual. This book has, is going to take down kingdoms. Oh, you'll see. You'll see. Just be faithful. Be faithful and you'll be able to rejoice in, in, the, in the destruction of the enemy. You'll be able to do it. It says you're going to uh, uh, bathe your feet in blood. Because Don't worry. You won't be squeamish in that day. I'll, I'll get on that too. Matter of fact, hey, real quick, 2nd Ezra 16. 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and verse. Let's look at it. Forty-seven. 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and verse 47. Mm -hmm. And they that occupy thy their merchandise with robbery. Mm -hmm. the so now. We, we're getting, I know I jumped around a bit, but we're getting to a, a point here. Remember, it tells you that the, um, the, the, fear, the, the Lord's wrath and his fury is basically increased, right? And this is going to be one of, the, one of the many reasons, not only like David mentioned of what he's done to his people, Psalms 83, things of that nature, but I want you to really pay attention to, this, to these verses coming up here. Go ahead. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery. So who gains merchandise or wealth from robbery? When you think of Tyrone in the hood that robs somebody, get $50, $100. You ain't getting no merchandise. What you get, you, what you buy some Twinkies and honey buns? That's it. Put some gas in your car. Man, you ain't getting no merchandise from that kind of robbery. Merchandise is, 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 is ships, cargo, uh, a trade. You gain it from robbery. 
When you when you can go and, 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 and conquer a whole land and take all of their forestry, take all of their wood, and then that same wood, it said Lamentations, Lamentations 5, that same wood that you take, you sell it to people. You took it. The same diamonds you go over to Sierra Leone and take, you take it and sell it to people. You make money off of robbing others. Go ahead. The more they deck their cities, their houses. Hold on. I want you to think about that. I mean, gave the gave analogy about Tyrone. It's telling you the merchandise is, is enough money to build cities. You gain merchandise through robbery and so much that you can build cities. You deck your cities. You have the nicest cobblestone streets. You have the nicest buildings. You have the clean uh, 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 whatever, whatever. A uh, uh, public transportation. You have all of these things. You have all of these resources. But it was all from robbery. Read that again. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, mm -hmm. the more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions. Raheem robbing you and getting fifty dollars, you ain't building no city. You ain't building no house. You have no possessions. This is talking about like nations robbing nations. Go ahead. And their own persons, hmm. the more will I be angry with them for their sin, said the Lord. Oh Lord. Mm -mm. You ain't just read that right, did you? The Lord says. The more money they get from robbing us, the more money they get from um, stealing our land, our wealth, selling it, making money from it, they deck their cities, they deck their own houses, and they deck themselves in the wealth. God says each time they've done that, he grows more and more angry. You got to read that again. I'm sorry. Because it, it, it gives you the premise on why the Lord is going to do what he's doing. He's going to do. This is, it's, it's, it's also the mindset of not only did he do it, he's doing it to, his, to God's people on multiple levels. It's multifaceted. He's taken our identity. He's taken our wealth. He's taken our strength and spirit, our mind, our thought process. He's taken everything. And with everything that he's taken, the Lord grows increasingly angry. Don't think he's forgetting now. I know we've been suffering for a little while, but the Lord has not forgotten. He's taken detailed notes. Read that again. Read down to verse uh, 52. But go ahead. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 48. The more will I be angry with them for their sin, saith the Lord. Like as a whore, Whoa, jump up, verse read, 47. Read, read the whole verse again, yeah. Verse 47. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, mm -hmm. the more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons, the more will I be angry with them for their sin, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Like as a whore envieth a right, honest, and virtuous woman, mm -hmm. so shall righteousness hate iniquity mm -hmm. when, she dis when she decketh herself and shall accuse her to, to her face. Mm -hmm. When he cometh that shall defend him that diligently searcheth out every sin upon earth. Mm -hmm. And therefore be ye not like, unto, like thereunto, mm -hmm. nor to the works thereof. Do not be like the way these nations have dealt with one another. Now, here's not one another, with us. I'll say that, with us. Don't for a second do what they have done. A lot of times we, we when, I say they, when I say they took our mind, we labor to be like them. So what do we do? We begin to rob each other to try to gain more, to be like these daggone uh, covetous rappers, these covetous artists and musicians, so on and so forth. That all they do is perpetuate covetousness among our people that can't attain what they have. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Verse 52. Verse 52. For yet a little, an iniquity shall be taken away out of the earth. Hold on. Jump back up to verse 48. 
Verse 48. The more will I be angry with them for their sin, saith the Lord. Jump back to 52. For yet a little, and iniquity shall be taken away out of the earth. What does that mean? If the Lord is going to punish them for all the evil that they have done, God says, and, and iniquity shall be taken away out of the earth. Who is the one who, who is in context? Who has he been talking about? He's going to take them out of the earth. This is, this is what's going on. Now we know when the kingdom come, there won't be any iniquity in the kingdom. But this is talking about the nations that have been gaining possessions through robbery. Exactly, Officer Carmela. He's going to wipe them out. Go ahead. For yet a little and iniquity shall be taken away out of the earth mm -hmm. and righteousness shall reign among you. I like that. I like that rain. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Because the righteous will be in a ruling position. I like that thing. Real quick, uh, uh, Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 22. So he says, iniquity shall be taken away out of the earth. Go ahead. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 12 verse 22. Mm -hmm. Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, so the Lord chastens us. The Lord has corrected the children of Israel through slavery, through um, the depleting of strength. I mean, the list goes on and on, right? Because of our iniquity. Read that again. Therefore, whereas thou dost chast... Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, thou scourgest our enemies a thousand times more. Hold on. Now, here's the thing. Remember, the thought is Esau thinks most high is just like him because he has not received the great judgment yet. That in Wisdom of Solomon has not happened. He has not scourges our enemy a thousand times more. We read earlier that they're going to get double. Listen. That, that, this, this has not come to pass yet, but it sure daggone will. Read it again. Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten us, mm -hmm. thou scourgest our enemies a thousand times more. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, Ezekiel 25 and 14. The Lord will scourge our enemies a thousand times more. So this is why Micah 5.15 tells you that they're going to get a punishment unlike anything you've heard. You and, and listen, we read about some remarkable punishments in this Bible. We read about a lot of things. Uh, Elijah calling down fire from heaven. Uh, the, in Judges chapter, I think it's chapter 10, the Lord casting down great hailstones. We've read about that, but Micah 515 says the judgment to come is not like anything we've heard. This is some, listen, hey, I don't know what side you want to be on. There's two sides. There's destruction and deliverance. I personally would like to be on the side of deliverance because if the judgment for these nations is unlike anything I've read, that's a scary thing. Mm -mm, I ain't holding their hand in that one. No kumbaya over here with that. We will not be rolling through the cornfield together. No, Biff, I'm tripping you and I'm running. Okay. <laughs> I'm out. Okay? Like, look at that big boy run. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's your cat moving. <laughs> oh, man. What did I tell you to get? Ezekiel 25. Yeah, 25, 14. Go ahead. Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 14. Come on. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. By the hand of my people, Israel. Whoa. Hold on. So, something that's unheard of, in, especially in modern times, is those people that you see with their pants below their butts, hanging out on corners, enjoying being trap boys and dope boys and ho hoes and hookers and uh, or even good, good Christian girls, 
but you the pastor's side piece, you know, all of that stuff. Most High is going to change them, set them in order before the eyes of the nations. He's going to set them in order. And when they get themselves right, the Lord is going to use those men. Hmm, read that again. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people, Israel, mm -hmm. and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger. Here's what we don't understand. Remember I mentioned earlier when we said bathe our feet in, in the blood and things like that. Some of us can't even look at blood. You, you go to the doctor to get, a, to get blood drawn and you passing out. They got to wake you up. You a grown man fainting at blood. This is why the Lord has to put his spirit on us. Because we ain't ready for that. Like I said, most I tell us to bring judgment on the nations right now. We be late. Talk about uh, uh, I overslept. And then be blaming Asa. I hung out with Asa last night. It was his fault. He gave me something new to drink. Be blaming him. Mm-mm. Most of us, we ain't ready for that. That's why most of us said he let a uh, uh, vengeance is his. It's when he pours his spirit upon us and he calls us and activates us after he's destroyed these nations. He's going to subdue them. Man, I tell you, read that again. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. And they shall not, know. Not, not my fury? And they shall. And according to my fury. According to God's fury. Why is that? Because we are so forgetful and forgiving to these nations. We are forgetful and forgiving. So there's many things that they have done that we have put so deep into our mind, we actually forgot it. The Lord is taking detailed notes. That's why... The punishment he brings upon these nations is according to his anger. He's growing furious. We grew forgiving. When they come in, that Matthew 5, 44 says, uh, love, uh, you know, it said, hate your enemy, but not love mm -hmm. your enemy. Uh, we take that to the 10th power. Surely no, man. The devil, he, white man, he saw the devil. No. It's the Arab. <laughs> what? Hey, for all y'all that believe that Arab stuff too, you you are destroyed on another level. Because all the all the characteristics that Esau would have, the does the Lord furious with uh 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 is it does uh uh we call him uh Ish, does Ishmael have the Lord's word in his mouth like we just read in Psalms fifty? He said, "What what what have thou to do with my covenant in thy mouth?" Ishmael ain't 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 out here teaching nobody the scriptures. He don't have the covenant of God teaching all. So he doesn't, they don't fit. Ishmael does not fit. Okay? Stop the garbage, man. Y'all are crazy as hell. And that just shows another level of love for Esau. I know the Christians got a love for Esau. But if you in this truth, reading what he, who Esau is and what he's done, and you say Esau is the Arabs, you gotta, you outdo the Christians' love for, 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 for the white man. I'm going to tell you straight. Your love is on another level. Uh, a little bit more. Where, where I got you read? Oh, keep reading. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. Mm. So it's not our vengeance. It's the Lord's vengeance. He is going to pour his vengeance upon these nations. One of my favorite scriptures. Wisdom of Solomon 5, 17, please. <sighs> Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 17. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 verse 17. Mm -hmm. He shall take him his jealousy. He shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor. Mm -hmm. and so jealousy because these nations have placed in us a love for them. We love the creature more than the creator. God says I have a, a whole nother level of jealousy because they worship in the white man. Go ahead. And make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. Hold on. The Bible says 
God is going to turn these Israelite men, the one that you call niggas, the one that you and, and call Akata, the one you call Kushi Baba, all of these derogatory names, God said he's going to turn them into his weapons of war. I'm going to tell you that also will be uh, the Lord's battle axe. He's not joking about that. Read that last line again. And make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. Damn. I like that thing. I like that thing there. So real quick, we're going to end it with Isaiah chapter 61. What time we got? 19. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 61. And start at verse 1. Um, hold on. Let's go to Zechariah 10. Start at verse 3. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, mm -hmm. and I punished the goats, mm -hmm. for the Lord of hosts hath visited his flock, the house of Judah, mm -hmm. and hath made them as his goodly horse in the battle. Oh, you writing that down because you Judah, huh? That's <sighs> how these brothers do, man. The Lord says, read that, read that bottom part again for the Lord. And I will punish them, for the Lord of hosts hath visited his flock, the house of Judah, mm -hmm. and hath made them as his goodly horse in the battle. Damn. Go ahead. Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail. So out of, out of him, out of Judah, came forth the corner, what, the cornerstone, right? Go ahead. Out of him the nail, mm -hmm. out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together, mm -hmm. and they shall be as mighty men which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. Mm -hmm. And they shall fight because the Lord is with them. Mm -hmm. And the riders on horses shall be confounded. And I will strengthen the house of Judah. Mm. And I will save the house of Joseph. Mm -hmm. And I will bring them again to place them. Mm -hmm. For I have mercy upon them. And they shall be as though I had not cast them off. So there's going to be a time... Where we'll be as though we were never cast off at all. There's going to be a time where we won't even remember that we were slaves. We won't even remember that we were niggas. That we were called spicks. That these nations even ruled over us. That time is going to come. It says it's going to be like you were never even cast off. Because us ruling these nations is going to be not even second nature. It's going to be first nature. All we're going to remember is rulership. Go ahead. For I am the Lord their God and will hear them. Mm -hmm. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their heart shall rejoice as though as through wine. No, there won't be no rejoicing. And their heart shall rejoice as through wine. Mm -hmm. Yea, their children shall see it and be glad. Their heart shall rejoice in the Lord. But we can't be happy. We're the only people who's happy to say, you Israel, you happy to say. Rejoicing is all throughout the scriptures. The Lord is going to make sure that it's like we were never cast off to begin with. It tells you he's going to wake up like a night vision. We're gonna, it's going to be like a bad dream to us. <laughs> Yo, bro, I dreamed I was a slave. Man, you tripping, man. You ate too much unleavened bread. That's, that's how it's going to be. That's how it's going to be. Isaiah 61. Says the Lord is gonna say it's like you've never been cast off. I like that thing. Judah gonna be like his battle horse. Damn. Isaiah 61 and verse 1. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. Come on. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me mm -hmm. because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Mm -hmm. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives mm -hmm. and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Mm -hmm. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Go ahead. And the day of vengeance of our God. Hold on. So in verse 1, it says we preach good tidings to the brokenhearted, 
claim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison houses to them that are bound. But in verse two, it says, and the day of vengeance of our God. So we, so we have to talk about that as well. We have to talk about the vengeance of God. It's not just opening the prison houses and speaking, speaking liberty to the brothers and sisters and boosting their spirits, but also the vengeance of God. There's a day where his vengeance is going to come upon this earth to these nations and to the wicked of our people. I, I left that part out, but to the wicked of our people as well. Those who refuse to repent, those who refuse to serve the one true God. There's a judgment for you too. Go ahead. To comfort all that mourn, mm -hmm. to appoint unto them wait, that... Wait, 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 wait. You notice how it says, to, to, uh, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn knowing that these nations will not rule over you forever, but God is going to judge them, should be comforting to your spirit. To know you will not be a slave forever. It's, it should be comfort. To know that God is going to reward them the way they rewarded you. It should be comfort. Go ahead. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, mm -hmm. to give unto them beauty for ashes. God says, <sighs> Right now, I know, listen, brothers, sisters, I know your brother's handsome. I know sisters is beautiful, things of that nature. But right now, we are the ashes. We don't know what beauty really is. God says he's going to convert that. The ashes we live in now, the lowest state or the low standard of beauty, God said he's going to give you the real beauty again. Go ahead. The oil of joy for mourning. So we mourn now. We're in a low state now. God says he's going to show you what joy is. You know what joy is? You remember how, um, you ever saw Coming to America? Yes, or are you too young for that? Same. You sure? I did. Okay, not a remake, but the original. The original. Okay, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah young brothers, man. So what you, what you have is uh, uh, when Eddie Murphy's character woke up in the morning, he woke up with a smile. He woke up stretching with a smile. How many of us wake up with a smile now? When that alarm clock go off, are you smiling? Hell no. Nah. You're like, damn, man, I only got four hours sleep, man. On the phone with these brothers all night. Now I got to go in here and hear this crap from my boss. Or you wake up late, you jumping up trying to get everything together. Come on. Nah, y'all know we don't wake up with that smile. God says he's going to give you that joy again because all you're going to know is rulership. Damn. I tell you. Go ahead, read it. The hmm. garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So we, right now, we're in a spirit of heaviness. We will finally know what it is to have praise on our lips. That's the first thing we want to do. Right now, I know we wake up, we say, thank you, Lord, for another day, things of that nature. But it ain't the praise that it should be because our spirits are still low. Our spirits are still in a, in a servile state. We're waking up to go serve somebody. But imagine it's like harps and chimes playing as you're sleeping. And it's a nice tone that you will wake to when you are ready to wake up. You don't have to be anywhere. When you wake up, it's your servants lifting you out of bed. You feel like you're on a, a cloud floating. They float you. To, to do whatever you got to do. They, they bathe you like in the coming to America. They bathe you. I mean, this is, you ain't, you don't know joy. You don't know joy because we think it's a fictional movie. And that's only a glimpse of what you're going to enjoy. I tell you, go ahead, read. Mm. The oil of joy for mourning, mm -hmm. the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, mm -hmm. that they might be called trees of righteousness. That we might be called trees or pillars of righteousness. Go ahead. The planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified, mm -hmm. and they shall build the old wastes. Mm -hmm. Those cities will be built up. Go ahead. They shall raise up the former desolations, mm -hmm. and they shall repair the waste cities, mm -hmm. the desolations of of many generations. Mm -hmm. The desolation of many Jer Jerusalem. Go ahead. And strangers will stand, shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of a of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Hold on. Your plowmen, your vine dressers, meaning where your where your wine where your grapes are growing, 
they're the, the, the other nations shall be in there pruning the vines to make sure the grapes have the, the absolute best environment, the best treatment so that you have the best wine. Good. Verse six, but ye shall, but ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. Mm. Men shall hold call on, you. Hold on, hold on. This, this is why we gotta, we gotta end it with this here. It says, um, but ye shall be named the priests with an S of the Lord. <sighs> Sis said, I want a pool in my palace, man. Listen. And, and when we think of a pool, we think of this dirty little chlorine stuff yeah. here. Oh, man. Oh, hell. I'm talking about infinity. Uh, you got oceans to swim in if you want to. Uh, man, look. Hey, this, this, these, 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 ver these things got to boost your spirit. As your mind starts to really meditate on those things, uh, first of all, we can't fully fathom the beauty that we're going to be in the midst of. But that time when we read it, Guess is Officer Asa married? Hold on, let me go down. Let me go. All these messages <laughs> you point us. <laughs> Yo, the brother said, out of all these messages, that's the one I look up and see. Yep. Hey, the most I, that was the spirit of the Lord. Because I'm, I'm somewhere else, and the most I said, look up. <laughs> Yo. Yes, Lord, is it you? <laughs> Let me, how can I screen? Let me screenshot that. Hold on. Let me go down. Hold on. Give me up the screen. Hold on. Let me screenshot that. Hold on. Chill, Drew. I got it. Oh, man. Bam! iPhone. Team iPhone. It's 930. <laughs> oh, you got to finish this. Finish that verse for me, man. Verse 6. Oh, man. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 6. It says, but ye uh, shall be named the priest of the Lord. Uh -huh. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Mm -hmm. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. We can't be happy. We can't be boastful. Let me tell y'all, them devils, they devils, man. God says, when, they, when you get the riches of the Gentiles, you're going to boast in it. Like, yeah, you better bring it. I, you, you late. You gotta be boastful. Like how much he brought you, man. He brought me more. Hey, tomorrow you better bring me more. We're gonna be boastful. Read that line again. Man, y'all be following these devils, man. Go ahead. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory. Matter of fact, the we, and then the, the wealth that we get will be showing it. We'll be hey, look, look. You see that thing? Look, look at this, look at this gold bar he brought me. Let me see the one he gave you. Ah! <laughs> ah, he brought me the real thing. He brought you silver. We're going to boast. Do y'all understand that? We're going to boast in the riches that they give us because they're going to have to pay tribute. We're going to boast. Read that again. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Mm -hmm. For your shame Ye shall have double. For the shame that we have in this life, God said he's going to reward us double. We're going to have a lot. So even think about the, 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 the even the affluent of our people that repent. Remember Joseph of Arimathea, um, Nicodemus, they repented and followed Christ. So even if those who have something in this life, God says this is nothing compared to what he's going to give. It's nothing compared. Go ahead. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Mm. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. And that's how we're going to end it. Everlasting joy shall be unto the children of Israel. Everlasting, meaning forever. Forever. This is, this is, this, this should be a spirit booster. This should be something that you reflect on and, and, and meditate on at, at uh, whether it be later on or as you, you know, whatever, we watch the class, whatever it may be. But these scriptures are scriptures you should be reading to help boost your spirit, especially during these times when they got everything locked down. 
You what you in your house melancholy? No, you read this and smile. Be like, yo, that's crazy. You sound like bro, man. Yo, that's crazy. That's how we should be. So make sure y'all studying. Making sure make sure we're studying. Make sure we applying. All right. Um, I'm gonna end it there. I'm gonna end it there. Right. Picture that in your mind. Right. 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 Oh, by the way, yeah, I'm, I'm Captain Shamaya. This is... Off season. They already know you, bro. <laughs> what time is it? 9.30. 9.34, okay. All right. Yeah, they know you, bro. Let's see if I missed anything. All praise, hey, uh, sis, uh, princess Amaya, don't, don't have them uh, give you a pink slip. Yeah, I left that Android family. That Android got the devil on it. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get some messages. Cap said, "Hey, y'all gonna think that's a doctrine? Let me not even joke around, because y'all be taking some stuff and running with it." To my Cap said, Android got the devil on it, so. I went and got a $9,000 phone that I can't afford because, right. oh, somebody else said, but sir, did you answer the sister? Is the officer married? Let me, screen, let me screenshot that one too, hold on. <laughs> oh end man. End the class, Cap. Oh, no, I can't end the class, hold on. Oh, this is funny. I'm sending this to the captains in Deke right after this, man. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, answer the question. They want to know. They asked you, Cap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All praises. All praises. All praises. Right, right. Okay, now, sisters know who Officer Ace is. You see that thing? Bro, answer the question so we can log off. I ain't logging off till you answer. <laughs> Officer Asa is proving somebody, y'all. He's proving somebody. He's not married, but he's proving somebody. Since since he mute now, I don't know. I don't know what the hell wrong with that brother? All right, Israel. Uh, Lord's will. Lord's will. We, like I said, continue to study and like Bishop Boy said, study, pray, and apply. Uh, that. Lord's will, all this rejoicing we'll be able to do in the day of the Lord's vengeance and in his kingdom, we will be able to do together. All right. Lord's will. Lord's will. I pray. I pray. So pray for one another. Let's keep each other strengthened and encouraged, especially during this time. Check check on the elderly of the congregation. Any If anyone is sickly in the congregation, make sure you check on them. Um, you know, do our best because we all we got. I always say it, we all we got. All we got is one another. So Let's stay in the spirit. Stay faithful, y'all. All right? Most high in Christ bless you all. Shalom. Shalom. Raheem with dimples. Let me screenshot yeah. that too. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wow. Hold on. They, this is going in this morning, bro. I got it back. Hold on. Got to get that. Oh, I got that one too. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> uh, come on. All praise. Shalom, y'all. Most high Christ bless. Raheem with dimples. Oh.